Welcome to part two of my Apple laptop collection. Uh, in the first video I showed you all of my PowerBook G4s and now I want to show you here the remaining Apple laptops I own. So I looked around my room and my storage and I dug out those laptops. So those are all of my Apple laptops. Let's get started with once again the oldest one. The oldest one is also one of my most valuable Macs I have. This is a Macintosh PowerBook 180C. I picked this up years ago um, and back then it also had a failing hard drive. And what we also discovered is, because it wouldn't boot, um, the internal connector which connects the video cable likes to get loose on those. And uh, I bet with you it's the same right now. But I haven't booted this up in a while and it does work. It just has this problem with the SCSI hard drive situation. Uh, if you don't know, SCSI is a different type of hard drive connector. It's uh, not very wasn't very widespread in the industry. It was most of, most of the computers were using just normal IDE, which Apple uh, eventually moved to, thankfully. But in those years, they had SCSI drives, and the problem is you just can't get any cheap replacement drives. So the problem I have always been facing with this Mac is um, getting a boot disk for it because I don't feel like spending a fortune on uh, on another SCSI hard drive which is old and will eventually fail too um, and I sh I'm just not willing to do that and adapter solutions are very very rare and expensive as well so if I spend the money, it's expensive either way but if I spend the money I'd much rather get an adapter to SD or compact flash or something. The problem is finding one is impossible. I know in Australia there is a company which makes SCSI to SD adapters which are awesome but I just can't get my hands on one of those. They won't ship it to Europe and if I find one on eBay it's super expensive. So I don't know, maybe one day we'll bring this back. Uh, so enough of the rambling, just that you know. But apart from this problem with the SCSI, uh, it is a pretty cool computer. It has a working floppy drive, which is very good. Um, so you can boot up a live copy of macOS, which you might do if I find the floppy. I think it's in there somewhere. Um, it is, I don't know what a year, but it is pretty thick as you can see, since this was one of their first laptops, I suppose, that uh, looked like this. There was also the Macintosh Portable, which is a huge piece like huge huge brick computer sort of similar to the one I have uh, the the Eastwood laptop but this was much smaller and this actually deserved the name laptop for once here are all the connectors quite different than you find today this has also a color display which must have been super cutting edge back then this is why the C is there that stands for color so that is that must have been something. Whoa, the, you were the you were the man when you had that. I bet. Um, got a really nice keyboard, um, and it's in really nice condition as well. If you take a look at it, the only problem it has is it has here a one of those like uh, bezel things that covers here. This cover that is missing, but that's really everything wrong with it uh, aesthetically. And again, the last time I booted this, it was also working. So, it doesn't have a failure of any sorts, uh, except the hard drive. So let's try to boot this thing up then. Hope that it still does something. And if it goes into the boot loop, I know what's wrong then. That's again the video cable causing it. So I won't be worried if that happens. There you go. Is it gonna reboot or just show a blank blank disk icon or something? Yeah, blank disk icon there. Alright, this thing just shut off. What's going on there? <laughs> I think I have a wrong power supply that probably can't supply enough power for this thing. I'm trying this Huawei one. I remember that worked. Uh, well, uh, 
There is something else causing it, I suppose. Well, guys, you see there, this thing has some serious issues. I don't know what's up now. Doesn't want to do it, but hey, uh, well, that's not, not so great, I guess. I'm actually questioning my decision spending some money on a drive for it now. <laughs> so if you know what's wrong there, uh, well, well uh, help is gladly appreciated, but you know, it could be anything, basically. Um, but it's looking like a power delivery problem or something. Anyway, there it is. Old ass power book, uh, really special piece of hardware. Uh, maybe I can get it working one day, but uh, yeah, that will be another video, I suppose. Then the next one up is this computer that's a Macintosh PowerBook 1400 CS, also quite old computer, um, and it has a similar problem to my other vintage PowerBook. I am not particularly lucky with those sort of PowerBooks. Now, this one has. Uh, a modded uh, IDE to a uh, compact flash adapter installed because this has IDE interface, so that's great and all, but the thing is it, its floppy drive here is dead. It doesn't do anything. I have removed it now. Um, and just the spare, you know, a thing in there. Um, and that's a shame because floppy drives for those aren't the run of the mill floppy drives. So, I would have to go on eBay and look up a floppy drive or even CD drive for one of those. And if you find one, guess what? It's expensive, yeah. So, I could get this to work. The thing is, um, I would need to invest into a drive, which I might do. You know, just if, uh, if I find one and I, I decide to buy it, I can fix it then at least. So, I don't know when this was released. This isn't perfect. Uh, it's looking pretty decent from here. You'll see there is very little wrong with the keyboard. These seem to have pretty sturdy keyboards. Feels great to type as well. Has even a touchpad. OMG. Um, screen is fine as well. I glued it together there. You could see that. Uh, maybe here the super glue disintegrated the plastic, unfortunately, somehow. But I. I tell you, it's better than than it was before. Before it would, it was on the edge of just just breaking apart. So I put some glue in there, and it it you know welded it pretty well together. So now I can move the hinge without fearing that it's gonna all fall apart. Um, yeah, about processor and stuff, I'll put it again in here because I have no bloody idea. Uh, I know it's a power PC. Just check here. That's a model. M3571. This one, uh, can't really show you much about it. Why don't we give it a shot and try to boot it up and see if it's still with us? Unlike its other brother, which is having symptoms of uh, dying. So, this uses the PowerBook G3 style connector. Um, using here this cheap Chinese knockoff charger. I don't worry too much about it, um, but uh, you shouldn't do stuff like this. Anyway, ooh, that's pretty eager to get back alive. Does it show a signal? Because hey, once again, it doesn't have anything on here. The thing is, you might also say, why don't you clone something to it? Why don't you grab an image of WinRoll PC or something and uh, restore it to the XCF card. Well, I tried every freaking possible way. Either it failed to restore, or it restored and it just didn't recognize, or, you know, it just nothing ever booted up on this, unfortunately. But as you see, it wants to. It just can't because I can't get a installation medium on here. And those were the days before Firewire target disk mode, before Firewire hell, so... Um, I can't just hook up another Mac and use its optical drive. No, it's not working like this. So, um, yeah, it's a kind of unfortunate, but um, this, I mean, it's not unfixable. It just needs a floppy drive and that, they, would, they would be back. So maybe look up uh, one of those and if I find one for a good deal, I'll definitely buy then. So, uh, yeah, that's the PowerBook 1400 CS. Pretty old machine. Uh, and pretty cool too. 
quite like it. But yeah, it's not perfect. The hinge doesn't snap, uh, it's missing this kind of panel there. But I got that for a reasonable 30 bucks, so I don't, yeah, I don't complain. Oh yeah, it's also breaking apart there a bit. But that could maybe be fixed, I don't know. What do I know? But I know that uh, you can pretty easily get inside of this power drive compartment. You can just lift this off and then take this whole keyboard out and... Whoa, what is that? I remember that I had something in here. Well, today we're finding out quite a lot. Uh, well, I just have so many computers I don't remember too much about every single one, but... I kept the screws in here for the hard drive. No, that was smart for me. Plus the caddy. Yeah, but there's nothing in here, so I can just uh, put an adapter in here or another IDE drive. You know, nothing wrong with that too. My dude has as well. I have stillions of those. Here, it's not a big deal. You know, IDE drives they're everywhere, and it's not such a big deal. So, bringing this back, if I find the goddamn drive, isn't too hard. Why doesn't it close now? Ah, there we go. This is like the, the cover. Oh so yeah, those were the days, guys, where Apple actually made stuff that's upgradable and repairable. Well, yeah, long gone. Speaking of upgradable and repairable, this is probably the most upgradable Apple laptop, period. The most easy to upgrade one, definitely. Um, this is a PowerBook G3, Wall Street, Lombard, Kanga, what the hell do I know? Um, but um, this, I, I don't didn't like it at first, believe it or not, and I'm still not digging the looks, but after I got it and I played around with it a bit, uh, I was just amazed how, how well built it is, but also how upgradable it is, so, and easy to work on, so I just, I get it, what so many Mac fans like this particular Mac so much. Uh, this has LCD screen, pretty okay keyboard, some say it's the most amazing ever, uh, I back to differ, uh, you know, if, when you ever owned a ThinkPad, you, <laughs> yes, you know, it's quite challenging to to uh, get a better one then, but uh, anyway, it's still pretty decent. Uh, it's got absolutely nothing wrong with it, this is one of the most nice ones I've ever seen. I've seen many bashed up ones on YouTube as well. People, you know, don't always take care. And this one, this one is in stunning condition, as you can see. And uh, still has the port door there. This has VGA, Fireware, and USB and Ethernet. So as you can see, this is much, much newer than the one we saw before. So this is, means it's also easier to tinker around with for me. Expansion card slot there. Battery there, which as you can see, Still works. Oh my god. And yeah, optical drive there. And what's so cool about this one is it is having solid state media. This has a compact flash adapter instead of a hard drive. And the result is since this has also no fan, it is 100% silent. So if anybody says, when Apple releases an ARM Mac without a fan, oh, they are the first to do that ever. Uh, they already did that, guys. So, yeah, that that is that is pretty pretty cool, I'd say. And also, as always, flip up keyboard and there is everything. Where you can see, you can take a sneak peek in there. That is a 16 gigabyte compact flash card. It's booting up here. I think 10.3. I had a hard time getting it on there, believe it or not. It, it wasn't so easy. <laughs> Just uh, had lots of problems. You can check out the video. It's quite amusing. But it's working. And I have made an image of it. So if anything fails on it, I can always restore it. It's going to work. So you only do this sort of work once and that's it. So here we finally have a Mac where you can go to about this Mac. <laughs> 400 megahertz G3, 320 megabytes of RAM, and that is, I think, fine for 10.3. That's why I went with 10.3, since I already have plenty of 10.4 systems, but I only have now this 
system. So I think that would fit this this machine pretty well. With more info we have here um, the SanDisk adapter. Uh, that's I think does it show somewhere the adapter? It's only the SanDisk is only the compact flash. Uh, no, uh, but yeah. Um, what what do I know? I also replaced the the drive with an LG, I think it's an LG DVD ROM drive. So that is that is pretty cool too. Just as simple as swapping it out. Let's see what we got: old Opera, old Camino. Yeah, some old software on here. Let's check out the graphics. I wanted to show you the graphics, but just forgot. Oh yeah, there we go. It's Erase M3 8 megabytes. So it isn't the best graphics out there, but Panther runs surprisingly well. I mean, they have a G4 Cube with a Rage Pro 128 with 16 megs of RAM, and it runs it worse. Uh, but it's also running Tiger, but the animations and stuff, I mean, it, it, those aren't smooth on this one either, but I'd say this one runs it better. Uh, Alright, so that's the the PowerBook G3, and if I unplug the connector, there you can see it's still on. So this is one of those where the battery is still functional, and that was surprising to me because that is never the case of mine, never ever. But on this one, yeah, it is. There you go. So um, yeah, I'll shut this down now. And this has grown to be one of one of my favorite ones. Believe it or not, even though, yes, I still stand by my word, I don't like the look of it, but I've had much fun with it doing this project, and it's a pretty cool computer to work on, so definitely, definitely a cool addition to my collection. Maybe we should show this computer to some Apple engineers nowadays, and say, hey, come on, can't you make something similar to this, and not all, solder all your shit together and piss us off with a T2 chip, and make a operating system that looks like an iPad and oh, I could go on and on. But anyway, um, that is the PowerBook G3, let's move on. Our next candidate here is an iBook G3 dual USB. This was the first iBook G3 that looked like this. Well, I rescued this from the scrapyard, uh, probably would have ended up there. I got this at a flea market, a yard sale for I don't know, but I think 15 bucks. And uh, yeah, it looked terrible, but uh, I cleaned it off and now look at this keyboard! Look how well that cleaned up, I would have never imagined that. Um, this is, I think, from 2000, and yeah, it's not perfect, it's missing those two keys, that's, yeah, it's a minor thing, I'd say. But um, yeah, let's boot it up. And see what OS is ha is this has. Uh, now this is stock for once. Very rare sight in my collection because I like to tinker around with my computers. Um, it's it's just that I don't want to touch this because these are bitches to disassemble. Oh my god! Uh, probably one of the worst constructions I've ever seen. To get to the hard drive, it's a it's atrocious. Uh, so yeah, that's another reason why so many people hate it. And also, this this lineup of iBooks has lots of problems. Usually, it would crack pla the crack the plastic here. I had one of those G3 iBooks which had this exact failure. I threw it against a tree. Read the old video. <laughs> um, but this one, surprisingly, is perfectly working. Uh, hard drive is even healthy. But yeah. Um, it, it is pretty good looking, I'd say. I don't, I don't really hate the looks of it, uh, but um, it's definitely uh, not as iconic as its predecessor, the uh, the f toilet seat iBooks, the clamshell iBooks. I really want to get a clamshell iBook just to finish off my collection. But yeah, because those are so iconic. But yeah, uh, this is the successor of that of this. Oh, it booted up fairly long as you saw, so this isn't the fastest thing in the world. Let's see what it has. 192 megabytes of RAM and a 500 megahertz G3, so stock specs. I think the RAM has been upgraded once, but that's it. 8 gig hard drive. It runs uh, Jaguar, because it's just 
You don't want to push this too much with this 192 max. Uh, it could maybe do 10.3, but then it would be super slow. And you're already pushing it with Jaguars. And this is um, my go to OS 9 machine, actually. This, this runs OS 9 too. And OS 9 runs really fast with uh, this deal, those specs. And this has a pretty nice display, I must say. that That is something that I didn't expect. The display is looking pretty sharp to this day. And I like the form factor too, so um, I'd say this form factor definitely was a good idea that Apple introduced it. They also made, you know, G4 iBooks, which we'll see in a second, and the PowerBook G4s, which are the same size, and many people love them. Uh, Port-wise, just check them out, pretty basic stuff there. And battery is dead, it's not even recognized by the computer. And what can I say, it's nothing special. Um, and uh, I really don't want the hard drive to fail, <laughs> but right now it, it's it's working fine uh, and it cleaned up so nice. You should have seen that before. It it was looking like trash, really sorry state. But now I mean, it's it's even like shining a bit, <laughs> like how it, maybe this material wasn't so bad after all that they used. Uh, just a little crack there, but. You know, for, for what this probably has seen in its life, it held up pretty well, I'd say. Latch is also still functional. Yeah, um, little iBook, nothing special, just run of the mill iBook. Uh, maybe it's a little more uh, special that it's the first ever that from this form factor, but it isn't something, you know, remarkable or memorable. So, yeah, that's this iBook. So the last laptop computer from Apple that I own is this. Looks pretty similar to the previous one, huh? Well, because it basically is just a little beefed up. This is an iBook G4, uh, I think one gigahertz. And I already booted up because it takes forever in a day to get to the, to the desktop. I'll tell you why in a second. It has this weird yellowed keyboard. I have no idea how, why the keyboard alone yellowed, maybe it has been replaced and it, it yellowed there at the at the guy who stored it, what do I know uh, but yeah, it's, apart from that it's looking alright it's got not a lot of cracks except up here um, has a dead optical drive which is just famous for any Apple laptop until Intel I'd say since they're always always either jammed or don't read the disk and spit it out again or they always have problems. I have only two in my entire laptop collection from Apple that has the optical drive working. So uh, yeah, by the way, the iBook G3, the previous one, with this tray loading drive, that works perfectly. So yeah, maybe this uh, slot loading design isn't so great. Uh, but they improved it with the later models, don't, don't worry. So pretty similar ports, and as you see, this is um, a little more interesting, maybe boot it up here, uh, Ubuntu. This is also a Mac where I experimented with Linux around, um, and it, it was working pretty fast. It's It's got uh, 1.25 gigabytes of RAM, which is pretty alright, I'd say. Now I say it was fast, because nowadays it has a failing hard drive, yes, unfortunately. The time has come where this hard drive says, all right, I'm out of here. Well, it's still sort of holding on to its life, but uh, it, it's just taking forever, forever to do anything. As you can see, it took forever to bring up here the, the desktop and, um, oh yeah, the button is jammed too uh, sometimes. Uh, and yeah, it's... Eh, it's a little uh, sluggish, but that wasn't always the case. This used to run Ubuntu pretty well, pretty, pretty fast actually. Don't believe you don't believe that probably, but it it, it was pretty co a cool Linux machine at one point. You can see the system monitor takes forever to come up, and that's not really a hardcore program. <laughs> there you go. And as you can see, memory usage is pretty all right. Uh, plenty of RAM free, so yeah, this this was a pretty cool Linux uh, machine. Um, 
might as well just uh, load up a clone Scylla or so, and as long as it keeps working, I'll maybe make a clone of that. Uh, but it's always uh, it's always so annoying when the when the optical drive doesn't work because it's just you need to find your ways around with target disc mode and stuff and ah uh, but at least you can do that I mean hey that's something I just wanna uh, show you Mac OS X too this runs Leopard it doesn't run it fast without a failing drive but it did it all right. Um, if were when it was still healthy. Alright, finally did it. Here we are, Mac OS X Leopard. And uh, what's so cool about this machine is I actually used this uh, to code. I ran some C programs on here. I was just interested how this low-end hardware would handle my programs and uh, they were running pretty alright. Um, yeah, also compiling and stuff. It was pretty fun to test it out. Keyboard is also nice too. And uh, yeah, it is a PowerBook 5.6. Yeah, I think it's around made around 2004-ish. Let's see what it has. A Mobility Radio 9200. 32 megs of RAM. Eh. So that was more the budget, budget oriented <laughs> computer from Apple. If you wanted better graphics, you went for a PowerBook, of course. Um, but yeah, it's running it pretty alright. Leopard is maybe not the best OS for it. Um, maybe put Leopard on the faster ones, on the 1.4 gigahertz ones. But hey, uh, with the 1.25 gigs of RAM, it runs it alright. So can't complain too much. Just the hard drive is dragging it down so much. That that's why I don't want to use it nowadays. And also, as I said before. Swapping the hard drive in one of those is just so bloody annoying and um, don't want to do it. Just, I'm honest here, I don't want to do it. It's uh, a long project and annoying and exhausting and frustrating. So, yeah, maybe one day, but as long as it sort of boots and crawls up to the desktop, I'll just leave it the way it is. Not using it for anything, obviously. So yeah, that is uh, the, the iBook G4. Come on. Oh, damn it. Oh, this is so frustrating. Come on. Shut down. Just shut down. <laughs> so while this is shutting down, um, I will... Just end the video here. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you find those Macs cool. Yeah, they're not something groundbreaking special, I know. But I collected them over the years and I decided why not show it to you. And some of you might find that interesting. So I hope you liked the video. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Shut down already. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Weird. <laughs> ah, boy. Come on. Come on. There you go. All right. See you later.